tank builds are one of the most underutilized builds in the Nameless Anomaly. And most of the time, tank players that do use them in TNA become more of a hindrance to the team than anything else. So, here is how you can be the best at playing tank. Today, I'll be showing you two builds which are very similar, one for Guardian and the other uses Praecedium. The builds are mostly similar, some items and abilities can be switched around depending on your budget or liking. Also, I should preface this. The Guardian build for the most part is from a Discord user called Jackie Dog in Blue's Discord server. Go check out the server, the link will be in the description. The main build in focus is on the Guardian build. We use Cancer for skill points and health region, Het useful for skill points, overall health region and mana region, Eden blessed guards mostly for the same reasons as Het useful, and Boreal which is here to give an insane boost to health region. Now if you don't have Boreal you can replace it with Ensa's ideals, it's a very nice substitute for Boreal if you do not have the budget for one, however I strongly recommend you get a Boreal. Same case with the main weapon. Guardian. Substitute Praecedium for it if you do not have the budget for a Guardian. For the accessories, we have two diamond solar rings, one of the best tank rings. Now, here's a bit of a weird one. Anya's Penumbra for the bracelet. And I'll get back to this in a second. For the necklace, we use Strobe Light. That slot effect allows you to effectively keep the boss in one place for the most part. So, why do we use Anya's Penumbra for the bracelet? The cycle for this build is War Scream Bash. Without the bracelet, you get 19 costs on both spells. With the bracelet, however, it goes down to 17 if you assign some extra skill points in intelligence. I suggest you only use Anya's Penumbra if you're having trouble sustaining the cycle and if you are tanky enough where you don't need the extra tankiness from something like Clockwork, for example. For the ability tree, it's mostly a hybrid between Battle Monk and Paladin. Paladin is of course to enable us to tank effectively and Balamonk is for some small extra tankiness with counter and for some smooth movement utilizing uppercut charge cycle. I'll skim over the ability tree while mentioning two important things. We take provoke for the minus 5 war screen cost even though we have strobe light and we do not take Ragnarokker due to it giving an extra plus 10 cost on war screen making the main cycle of the build extremely unsustainable. The tree is very flexible, so change it however you like. And now I'll be going through every room one by one, and I'll put some timestamps on screen if you wish to skip somewhere. Now let us begin with the first segment of the raid. The first room you will encounter is either berry room or hold room. We are going to start with the hold room. It's very very simple, just go up top. Stand there for 60 seconds and it's done. If your teammates somehow fail to kill the void holes that kick you off the platform after 10 seconds, find the Heart of Darkness and cast War Scream Bash to take the aggro off of your teammates as best as you can. Now is probably a good time to mention it. For the buffs you want anything that increases your survivability or mana region. Pick whatever you feel that you need, the buffs aren't really detrimental so choose whatever you see fit. Now for the berry room. For berry room, there is not much to cover as well. Most of the time, you want a DPS player to take the berry and destroy the void holes. If that happens, try to steer near them as much as possible and take aggro with the war screen so that they don't die if they are for example using something very squishy like Dibzer. If all your teammates hesitate for a couple seconds to take berry, you should take it. And make sure you have an offhand like charging flame that has two tier 6 thunder powders on it. So you can do it yourself reliably. That's about it, very straightforward for the first two rooms, and now we'll check out the rooms of the second segment of the raid. For tree room, you have two things that you need to do. Firstly, follow any squishies or grounded players that cannot take on mobs like the crabs reliably, whether that means they die in a few hits or don't have enough damage. Try to take off the aggro from mobs with War Scream so they all damage you and won't bother your DPS players. Secondly, stand in front of Soul Shrubs to act as a meat shield for your DPS players to take all the hits from them. If a player dies, 
make sure that you protect the other player at all costs. Otherwise, if two players die, the room becomes really slow, to the point where you even might fail the raid due to the time limit. And now for the light room. Obviously in light room, you should be the one guiding the players and navigating them around. Take light and go in, you'll see I follow a certain path. That is most of the time the path that has three shadowlings spawning most of the time for a very efficient first part. Get to the shrine, take aggro from mobs and keep all the other players safe, and it'll go smoothly. For the second part of light, do the parkour as per usual, and always try to be in front in case the null lords don't die. They deal a lot of knockback and you're immune to it, so once again, act as a meat shield. Finish the second part, and afterwards, just fight the boss. For the boss, it's very simple, just press F5 once, down so you can see the boss from the top view, and then cycle War Scream Bash to try to keep the boss in one place. After the boss is killed, enter the void hole and continue on from there into the second part of the raid. Bold Room is unfortunately a room that renders tank players somewhat useless. You unfortunately have nothing much to do other than try to buff your allies with Radiance, tank for them if they see a bold keeper, and try to kill bold catchers that latch onto wolves by constantly pulling them towards you with a Warscream. But yeah, unfortunately this room is very boring for tanks. On to the other one. For this room, the first thing that you want to do is finish the parkour on the left side from where you enter. Obtain the void matter and place it into the giant void hole whenever you have time. For the waves, try to stand in the middle and just cycle War Scream Bash to pull all the mobs toward you and make them aggro you. Makes for a very smooth experience for your teammates and 99% of the time they'll be fine. For the last boss of wave 3, you want to stand near the middle void hole that spawns the boss, you will take its aggro and then drag it into the corner I'm showing you right now. Once you've dragged it, cycle War Scream Bash and keep it in place for your teammates to kill. After that, finish the room and proceed to the final boss of the raid. Now we have reached the main purpose of a tank flare in the raid, keeping the boss in one spot. It might take you a few raids to practice truly keeping the boss in one place for the most part, and sometimes Greg might wander off a bit, because if you didn't know, aggro is based off of how many hits a player does, and that's why Bolt Slinger Archers usually take aggro more often than you'd normally expect. Now that you've entered the arena, go stand where Greg usually lands, press F5, Look down like you would for the light room boss, cast radiance if you can help it to buff your teammates, and then keep pressing spacebar and jump. Why jump, one may ask? Well, this helps immensely with taking aggro from Greg, because when you jump, he jumps, and when he jumps, he can't move to a target that took aggro. So to keep it simple, if you don't jump, Greg will immediately wander off when someone takes aggro. If you're jumping, however, a player will, most of the time, take aggro while Greg is midair, rendering him unable to move and you can take aggro in the time that he's jumping. If you don't want to jump, absolutely fine, but it helps a lot. Now for the cycle, you want to cast Force Scream and Bash to constantly take aggro like I'm doing. Try to fit in melee attacks to charge courage to potentially buff up your teammates if they're near you. For the most part, that's how you keep Greg in place, one thing I want to know is that you are very weak to true damage. Specifically, Watched Phase and the spell where Greg casts small circles beneath him. The circles are extremely dangerous, and if you notice you are losing health very rapidly, don't be afraid to charge out and save yourself, because you being alive is much more important in this scenario. Other than that, you should be able to tank everything with relative ease. Alright, that's about it for this tank guide. I hope this guide encourages players that brush off the tank role as insignificant to try it out for themselves. You'll be a viable asset to any team, no matter what. If you have any critiques, anything you want to add, or any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will address them as soon as possible. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching.